Hello and uh, welcome to Behind the Headlines. Today is uh, Wednesday the 11th of May 2022 and in this programme tonight we will be talking about the leak uh, about the Supreme Court's plans to overturn Road versus Wade, the federal ruling that made uh, abortion uh, legal in the United States and um, the, the underhand activities that are being carried out by the Democrats in, in potentially looking at potentially uh, almost a, a civil war in the United States and some of the practices have been absolutely awful in this and of course this program is about defending the uh, pro-life choices so finally we could see a historic moment if the Supreme Conservative Justices have the courage of their conviction um, to overturn Roe versus Wade. Uh, Reagan, uh, it's great to be joining you tonight for this live programme as we, as we discuss um, these amazing battle lines that are being drawn over the issue of abortion, particularly in America, and also the hysteria regarding the uh, liberals uh, and militant liberals over the announcement that the Supreme Court could overturn almost this 50-year federal law that is Road versus Way, which means that abortion um, can be carried out in any state and no state has the right to say no. And we could see an end to this. Yeah, so in many ways, there's a lot to be concerned about in regard to this leak. It calls into the question uh, the Supreme Court's integrity. It calls into question the honesty of various staff members. It was leaked uh, in, in some way likely by uh, a member of staff. It's not 100% clear on how that came about. Um, arguably, it could have been that um, the image which was then scanned and dispersed and, and sent out uh, what was left somewhere unattended um, in a public place. It's unlikely. Very unlikely. Very, very unlikely. Uh, and, and so there's an investigation going on to uncover what happened. It does seem to be a deliberate ploy to potentially stoke up some of the aggression and some of the outrage that we've seen on the streets, not, not just on the East Coast, close um, to the base of the Supreme Court, um, close to Washington, but um, we've seen rioting in the West Coast and various other hot spots, particularly among the liberal cities um, in the US. Which is interesting, Simon, because Roe versus Wade is not saying that um, abortion is, is legal in, um, in, in the sense that uh, it, it covers all states for every single purpose. Each state does have a degree of right to um, make various laws and there have been many states that have uh, voted to have what they call heartbeat bills in many cases where in an individual cannot procure an abortion uh, once the baby's heartbeat is detected about six weeks. Many women don't know they're pregnant until about six weeks. Um, so th the claim is, well, this, this would put many women in jeopardy and would take away their right to choose and um, it's their body, it's their choice, whatnot. Well, the removal of Roe versus Wade does not ban abortion. This is the the thing that it, it's very strange to see people rioting in California about because California of all states is very unlikely to overturn its abortion legislation. Um, it, it, there are about 25, 26 states that are likely to impose heartbeat bills. California is not one of those. So when you see, uh, as I saw video footage of sweary protesters assaulting LAPD in the street over this, uh, first of all, you think, how self-defeating is it to be assaulting police officers over um, this decision. It does not portray you as a bastion of moral integrity in any way. Um, but also, this probably won't be affecting you. Uh, the issue, though, is that those who are, are protesting and showing this aggression, and indeed they put up um, gear and fencing in front of the Supreme Court anticipating violent protests, um, it, it all goes back to the reality that Really, they don't want anyone, any state, to have any right to impose legislation that is pro-life. And the fact that this draft has been approved of and agreed as genuine and legitimate 
showing what seems to be the current thinking within the court has provoked extreme anger in those who are pro-abortion. Also, it's extraordinary to think as well, according to the Fox News, that uh, 63 million uh, abortions have occurred mm. in America since the 1973 Roe versus Wade ruling. So that kind of puts it in its context. Um, and, and, and Reagan, as someone that is, is very passionate about this subject, and I know that you devote a lot of time and a lot of your work to the issue of abortion, uh, and particularly this is your nation we're talking about, mm. who's had this uh, federal abortion law for nearly 50 years, 50 years next year would be his anniversary um, so that's virtually most virtually all of my lifetime um, uh, at, has been in place uh, as Christians why does this matter so much and why is it so important that we actually fight for uh, pro-life rights and that is our question mm. for tonight um, why should Christians fight for pro-life uh, and that's our question as we discuss this a decision to be made by the US Supreme Court to overturn Road versus Wade to end the kind of federal abortion and allow individual states to make their own policies regarding whether they should ban abortion or keep abortion. When does life begin, Simon? From conception. conception the, exactly. the scriptures uh, are very, very clear that it is while we, um, when we've been conceived, that God has given us life. That's the moment. This is part of. Um, of how God has created us. Who has the right to take life away? Right, the, the, the giver of life, the, the one who uh, himself, because of, of sin, um, pays the wages of sin, which is death. Sin has affected the whole world, and so um, there's death, there's um, fallenness. There's fallenness in how people um, conceive in many ways as well. Uh, viewers will know, and I, I know you do, as you, as you said, um, a, a significant part of my work in the past few years has been in leading a pregnancy crisis helpline. It is called Pregnancy Crisis Helpline. It's a UK charity that aims to help women in crisis pregnancies with alternatives to abortion. Um, pro, being pro-life is not just being pro-birth. It's not being anti-abortion only. It is saying, actually, we have something better for you. We have a solution that's life-giving. Yes, we acknowledge you have a place of crisis. We acknowledge that, um, that this is a, a devastating situation, but here is something good. And we've been able to see women come to us in various states of trauma with various um, um, reasons for their pregnancy who've managed to find hope and help in that. But it's all rooted in that fundamental theological principle that God breathes life in, into us from conception. We read of that in the Psalms. We read um, that God has seen our um, unformed substance. Before anyone else was aware of our existence, He knew that He had breathed life into us. And Ecclesiastes, the question is asked, you know, who, who knows when God breathes life in, into um, the bones of um, the, the child who is um, being expected in the pregnant woman? There, there's this indicator throughout the Old um, testament of life from conception. You go into New Testament times and consistently through the early church there is n not just a sense of life from conception and apostate, but there was an explicit um, command, there's an explicit sense of you shall not procure an abortion. Look at the early church and guiding document, the Didache, um, which detailed church rules essentially, and it was rooted very much in um, that, that framework from the Old Testament. It specifically says to not take a potion or to seek to destroy a child, and it, it equates it um, with, with killing, it equates it with murder in those early church documents. That's how we are at this point today as Christians needing to ask, why should we care about this. I think you've said that very well and also I think it's important to to make this observation as well is that this is also a lot of hard work and uh, campaigning on behalf of evangelical Christians in the United States um, and they've made it a political issue and uh, they've made it a term of the uh, evangelical if, if the Republicans want to win the evangelical vote then they need to be tough on the issue of abortion and that's why the uh, Republicans are against abortion uh, and pro-life because 
of the Christian campaigning and influence within those parties. Um, uh, we've got any emails? So we do to... indeed. Um, this is from Jacqueline. Hi, Simon and Reagan. I found what the Democrats are saying or not saying so distressing. Sometimes I feel ashamed of being a woman. When I see other women's behavior, they just want death and blood, pure evil. A bad day for me today. Hurry up, Jesus, please. And indeed, Jacqueline, um, you may have seen there was a video clip of um, one individual, Elizabeth Warren, who is a very big um, player. You'll probably get to that. Just extreme anger over the very possibility of the removal of Roe versus Wade. Um, because essentially, it's not about preserving life. It's about women being able to end the life of their unborn child. Hi both, hope all is well. I'm glad this is the subject tonight as I've been praying about it all week and doing research. People are saying abortion not biblical, but they don't seem to understand biblical verses are there about killing and innocent blood. Could I ask you to flesh that out a little bit because um, I'm, I'm just um, thinking that something is missing there. Uh, those people who are saying that abortion is not biblical are correct. They're, they're right about that. Um, but you, you say they don't seem to understand biblical verses are there about killing an innocent blood. There are indeed, um, but um, that those verses that are there are in no way an approval of abortion um, at all. What are the Christian beliefs on IVF? I'm pro-life, God bless you both. We're not talking about IVF this evening. Happy to talk about it some other time, but um, that will be for another evening that you can um, potentially tune in and watch. I do have opinions on that, but no, not tonight. <laughs> I don't. I think I'll struggle on that one, Reagan. Um, I can talk about many yeah, It's a difficult I, one. I think it's I'll a very on difficult one. one. Only because I don't know enough. Um, let's have a look at this uh, very, very important um, CBN news report that was uh, came out last week as the leak was announced to the press that the US Supreme Court, certainly the Conservatives on the US Supreme Court, were looking to overthrow uh, Road versus Wade. Protesters on both sides of the abortion debate are turning out across the country in reaction to the leaked draft of a Supreme Court opinion overturning Roe versus Wade. I was happy that I saw um, the what they believe, what we believe should be the decision moving forward. It's horrible. It, it's so depressing. It's shocking. I can't believe it. Chief Justice John Roberts confirmed the draft is authentic, but said the decision is not final. He also called the leak an egregious breach and ordered an investigation to find out who did it. The opinion, written by Justice Alito in February, says Roe must be overruled and reportedly has the support of four other justices. We now have confirmation there are five votes to overturn Roe versus Wade clearly and unequivocally. There is a draft opinion. Nothing is final until the opinion comes out. With abortion, a case of this magnitude, you never say never, but... Um, it would be very surprising if anyone changes their votes at this time. In the Senate, Republican leader Mitch McConnell blasted the leak as another attempt at pressuring the court. What's unique about today is this is the first time we've had somebody on the inside try to attack the institution. With Democrats expressing outrage at the draft ruling and calling for federal laws to protect abortion. It is our intention for the Senate to hold a vote on legislation to codify the right to an abortion in law. But such a bill can't get past a Senate filibuster. And one of the main Democratic holdouts, West Virginia's Joe Manchin, appears to be holding firm on keeping the filibuster. Can you prepare to support ending the filibuster to Can deal with Roe? Say, I have no comment to make on basically uh, leaks and things of that sort. Let's wait to see everything. Meanwhile, legal experts and pro-life advocates say overturning Roe is just the beginning of the fight to end abortion in America. If the court overrules Roe versus Wade, that doesn't end the debate on abortion. It really just restores it and restarts it. So then it will be up to the legislatures, to the people's representatives in every individual state to pass abortion laws or restrictions as they see fit. This does not make things easier for the pro-life movement. In fact, it, it turns it from one fight into 50 fights. While abortion advocates point to national polls showing most Americans believe Roe should not be overturned, the states tell a different story, as legislatures across the country are passing laws restricting or banning abortion. Gary Lane, CBN News.
Thanks, Gary. Ann O'Connor of the National Institute of Family and Life Advocates joins us now. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Wendy. And give us your reaction to this apparent ruling and what it means going forward. Well, we're very excited. Um, you know, ultimately, even if the court overturns Roe versus Wade, um, America's network of 3,000 pregnancy centers, of which NIFLA works closely with, um, are going to be doing the same thing that they've been doing for decades. And that is providing women with the essential services and resources and comprehensive options. And uh, pro-abortion and media critics say pro-lifers are only concerned with changing laws, not actually helping women. Tell us the many ways pro-lifers are helping women with crisis pregnancies. Yes, I mean, pregnancy centers nationwide help more than two million people a year who are facing unplanned pregnancy. Um, we're ready and able for that number to increase. The services that they provide for free are estimated valued at over $250 million. So there's a lot of services going on to help women um, choose life, also help families. Um, we provide essential services like diapers, vitamins, baby clothes and equipment, parenting classes, mentoring, on and on. So these pregnancy centers have been doing this for decades. And no matter what the court decides, we'll continue to do it um, and, and even do more of that now. And tell us about the women who have been helped. What kind of impact <laughs> has that had on them? The greatest impact, Wendy, that we see is when a woman gets an ultrasound to confirm if she even has a viable intrauterine pregnancy. And during that process, she'll visit with her baby for the first time. And studies show when they see their baby on that ultrasound screen, they bond with that baby. Thank you for your emails and texts. We are live and interactive. Um, uh, Kat, thank you for getting back and explaining that. Hi again, Jen. So sorry, but didn't explain that very well. What I meant was I've been asking God for word to support that abortion is wrong. And um, it's, it's a really great prayer to um, have clarity um, from God on. Yes, there are complex situations that um, cause us to empathize and think this is, is a chaotic thing, but we have to ask is this the solution? Is it good to add a wrong to a wrong? Will that fix any crisis? And God has spoken, Kat. He, um, he, he has Psalm 139, verse 13 through 16. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed you in the womb, God speaking, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Um, in Psalm 127, three through five, we're reminded that children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. That's a general principle in, in regard to um, the, the goodness of, of uh, bearing children. And so we, we have to ask what, what makes life life? And if you, if you look at some of the uh, statistics regarding the formation that, that's even spoken of scripturally there of the human body in the womb, it is really staggering. By about uh, six, uh, no, 21 days, I believe it is, that the heart, the heart is actually beating and it's detectable as beating. Ph phenomenal. Most people don't even know that they're pregnant at 21 days. Um, then you have... Uh, by eight weeks, brain waves that are detectable, uh, you begin to see from that point significant elements of development, the formation of fingernails and whatnot. By, by 12 weeks, everything is in place that is uh, just needing time and development for, um, for that viability um, outside of the womb. It's just a development process. And so one has to ask, okay, what happens when you interrupt that development process? We're all developing even now. Yeah. What is that? So how, how do you how do you counter the argument by by liberals who support abortion mm. to say that uh, that life only begins after birth? 
Um, this is some of the no, arguments that, oh no, it doesn't. But I'm, I'm saying that this is some of our viewers would have to counter this when yeah. they're speaking to friends who support the issue of abortion. And one of the most popular line of arguments is that they believe that uh, birth uh, starts at birth. Mm -hmm. So when the baby's actually born, that's when life begins. Of course, we know that's not the case, but I think it's important to have the arguments yeah. so that we know how to defend the unborn. I think if you outline what actually is going on in the development of the child in the womb, it is, it's living, it's, it's moving, you know, it begins to kick. You can begin to feel kicks from about 12 weeks. That's not inanimate. And yet in the United States, we have this uh, allowance in many cases up to birth abortion. Um, in the UK, um, we are more um, st strict technically in the letter of the law, abortion remains illegal except in certain circumstances. Now, um, the letter of the law is abused and, and people can um, and have on this program and other programs on Revelation TV made that case. But, um, you know, tr 12 weeks is 95%. 95% of abortions in the UK occur under 12 weeks. Generally, across the world, uh, there are restrictions after 12 weeks. Uh, and that seems to be, there, there seems to be an element of conscience that, okay, the woman generally can feel the child at about 12 weeks, kicking, moving around, and the psychological um, and mental awareness that there's a living being that is developing and growing inside. Um, to, to stop that can cause great trauma in the aftermath. Uh, we, we do have some more um, S some more thoughts here. God's word is very clear, Les says. Psalm 139, 13 through 16, we just quoted that. You are exactly um, correct. Jacqueline says, me again, did you know that uh, on conception, a light is given off? Fascinating, um, Jacqueline, you can actually see, you're right, um, that the moment um, of conception, when the sperm meets um, the egg, there it is like a light when you, you look at it through, I don't know really fully how they do these things with microscope or whatever, um, they, they actually can see um, like a, a light of sorts, a glow that occurs. Something cataclysmic and transformative happens there. It, it's phenomenal. As the scripture says, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Graham says, keep up the biblical reasoning and the potential of cultural demise which people want to maintain. Um, their hard actions. Thanks for tackling this difficult subject. Politicians uh, need believers, prayers to help um, God's will for those babies that God gives to the world. Virtually all sin's roots are from pride, uh, i.e. we humans know best. Uh, let's continue to pray for hearts of repentance and love for the unborn. I suppose, I suppose a big question we've got to ask as well um, regarding the United States. Now, uh, according to the figures, over 68 million uh, babies have been aborted in the state since Road versus Way ruling of 1973. Uh, what would those 68 million people look like now? Cancer uh, doctors. Yeah, so I mean, how many Nobel Prize winners, yeah. how many kind of Olympic athletes, how many potential other kind of presidents or, or business people, how many artists, how many mm. dancers, how many, how many scientists out of all those, how many engineers, um, how many of those that would have had a unique plan in the eyes of God if they had the chance to, uh, to live their life on the earth, despite its difficulties and problems. But I mean, the saving grace is we know that these, uh, these children are with the Lord anyway. Yep. But it's a shame that they never got to live their life on the earth and fulfill their potential mm. and their calling that God had for them. Uh, and so therefore the nation uh, has suffered as a direct result. It, it's no doubt brought a curse on the United States. It's brought a curse on our nation and the Western world as well. And um, you know, this is the reason why we need so many immigrants to come into the country to f economically to fulfill the jobs. And ultimately, this will lead to the end of our civilization in the West. The draft ruling that was leaked from the Supreme Court that sparked our discussion this evening is very bold in its statement. It says that the Roe versus Wade decision, which takes the right to decide abortion laws by each individual state and places it with the federal government, was egregiously wrong from the start. Uh, in their draft decision to overturn Roe versus Wade, um, which, as you already indicated, occurred ha half uh, a century ago. We're, we're looking at um, s some real 
implications in regard to the Constitution. There's an acknowledgement that the Roe versus Wade decision was not constitutional. Um, and indeed, it does give more power, much more power to the federal government than the Founding Fathers ever would have thought. And in fact, it was probably not even on their radar considering um, the, the ending of unborn lives. In the draft opinion, uh, which was a document from Justice Samuel Alito, who wrote it, uh, said in 1973, Roe versus Wade um, decision enshrining uh, woman, abortion as woman's constitutional right was egregiously wrong from the start. Now, uh, four other justices voted with Justice Alito to overturn it, including the three justices nominated by uh, former President Donald Trump, Neil Gorush, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett. And the Republican appointed Justice Clarence Thomas also voted with them to give a majority on uh, the nine-member uh, court. Recently, numerous Republican-led states have moved to tighten restrictions with some seeking to ban abortions after six weeks, but previously uh, they have found that blocked. Uh, they found that blocked um, because of Roe versus Wade. In December, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments about proposed Mississippi law that would ban most abortions after 15 weeks. It was expected to issue a decision in the Mississippi case by June. Um, the majority on the court has reportedly decided not only to back Mississippi law, but to strike down Roe versus Wade as well. Um, this was the origin of that, um, that draft opinion that was drafted, uh, that was written by Justice Alito that sparked all of this outrage. The opinion is not final. Um, it is likely that this is a reflection of the final opinion, um, but it's technically not final to release by court. And so it, it seems that the leak was undoubtedly uh, designed to stir up outrage and to potentially create a situation in which uh, the Democrats may try to force other laws that would then um, take this decision out of the Supreme Court's hand. Also, the other one we have to take into account is uh, political considerations as well. I mean, going into the November midterm elections, um, which are not looking good for the Democrats, this could be an issue that will kind of mobilise their support base um, for those November elections, and they want to capitalise on that as well. But also we've seen the, the shocking behaviour of the Biden administration in not condemning the violence, and of course we do have um, a, a CBN News report talking about how protesters are actually protesting outside the homes of these uh, conservative judges to put them under pressure and to threaten them um, not to go ahead and overturn Road versus Way. So we're looking at a very dangerous situation where the Democrats are actually inviting violence. Now, yeah. let's have a look at some of the responses from the uh, from the uh, Democrats, uh, or I'd like to call them extreme liberals. Um, on their proposed overturning of Road versus Wade. So we got uh, Neil uh, Cuttle, who's a lawyer, who uh, regularly argues before the uh, court. Uh, he said that if the report were accurate, it would be the first major leak from the Supreme Court ever. So it's the first time this has happened in history. Uh, he also went to say that as the uh, yeah. former acting US Solicitor General, uh, this is the biggest step back for women in decades. Uh, it, ha uh, it will have proven consequences. Uh, you can now have a flat ban on abortion in any state. Hillary Clinton, the former uh, Democratic presidential candidate, uh, called the decision an absolute disgrace. Uh, she tweeted, not surprising, but still outrageous. The decision is a direct assault on the dignity, rights and the lives of women, uh, not to mention decades of settled law. It will kill and subjugate women, even as a vast majority of Americans think abortion should be legal. Uh, what an utter disgrace. Uh, we also have some more, uh, some more comments on this one. Uh, this one is um, Amy is it Butcher said abortion would automatically be banned in 20 states. Uh, she said they are literally stripping the women of this country of their rights. Uh, they are going to be state by state fights. There are going to be repercussions like never before. I cannot overemphasize what a change this is. Yes, we should be outraged. We are going into an election and women's rights are on the ballot. The American people are going to have to, to vote like they've never voted before. Then we have uh, Nancy Pelosi, the uh, Democratic Speaker of the House, saying the Republican appointed justices reported votes to overturn Road versus Wade would go down 
as an abomination, one of the worst and most damaging, damaging decisions in modern history. She says several of these conservative justices who are in no way accountable to the American people have lied to the US Senate, ripped up the Constitution and defiled both the president, uh, the president and the Supreme Court's reputation. Um, and uh, maybe you want to give the quote from, uh, you quoted earlier from uh, yeah. Senator Elizabeth Warren. So uh, I had seen a video where she expressed this, but she tweeted, an extremist Supreme Court is poised to overturn Roe versus Wade and impose its far right, unpopular views on the entire country. It's time for millions who support the constitution and abortion rights to stand up and make their voices heard. We're not going back, not ever. And of course, um, Simon, this has provoked outrage. Uh, these, these statements have been extremely violent. Um, they, they, have, um, they have completely destroyed um, trust. I would say the issue that is highlighted here with um, Nancy Pelosi, she's saying this is one of the worst uh, things. It's destroyed the Supreme Court's reputation. I agree. In many ways, it's destroyed the Supreme Court's reputation. Who leaked the document? Uh, it's highly unlikely that it was any of the Republican justices or lawmakers. So the, the individuals who have made the scandal of this are the very ones who are, are disappointed by this ruling, which quite rightly says, uh, on the basis of the American Constitution, this decision belongs with each individual state. But doesn't this also show a deeper, deeper issue? And that is the hearts of these uh, Democrat leaders. Um, and that absolute hatred for anything to do with God, anything that is biblically right, um, essentially what they're supporting is an abomination. And to know that you could be responsible through being a politician and a lawmaker, the responsible for the abortion of over 68 million yeah. babies, yeah. Um, that's almost wiping out an entire civilization. I mean, you don't lose that many people uh, in, 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 in wars unless it's a kind of major war like World War II, um, those numbers are extraordinary. So let's have a look at this very important CBN news item where those who believe in uh, pro-choice and pro-life are coming under real, real threat, even a threat of violence mm. from some of these Democrats and what I would describe as extreme liberals. The leaked Supreme Court draft opinion signaling the end of Roe v. Wade made Mother's Day an anxious one for many churches and pro-life groups across the country. In Madison, Wisconsin Sunday, vandals struck the offices of the pro-life group Wisconsin Family Action with an arson attack and a spray-painted warning that if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. Earlier in the week, Boulder, Colorado crews worked to remove graffiti, paint, and broken glass left behind after a night of vandalism at Sacred Heart of Mary Church. In the D.C. area this weekend, dozens protested outside the homes of conservative Justice Brett Kavanaugh and Chief Justice John Roberts. Senator Ted Cruz accused Joe Biden of tacitly encouraging violence by not condemning it. It was shameful that the White House refused to condemn violent protesters threatening the families of the Supreme yeah. Court. Democrats say this issue will bring out liberal voters like never before and could change the course of the midterm elections. Processing Others disagree. I don't believe it's going to change the outcome of the 2022 elections at all. Single issue voters seldom decide the outcome of elections. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the science hasn't changed in the decade since Roe, only the court has. This pro-life leader told CBN's Christian World News that technology has played a major role in changing attitudes about abortion. When a woman gets an ultrasound, studies show when they see their baby on that ultrasound screen, they bond with that baby. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said the Senate will vote on a federal bill protecting abortion this week, but it's expected to fail. His GOP counterpart Mitch McConnell says a national ban on abortion is possible if Republicans gain control of the Senate this year. Dale Hurd, CBN News. We have a very powerful email here. I had an abortion after being raped 35 years ago. The doctor pretty well pushed me through as I was very distressed and a single parent. Little was said about the scars it can leave and no counseling or prayer can ever erase the memories. 
Little was said about the lasting damage, even if deliberately forgotten, and what it can do to a woman's mind. We're built to produce and protect life. Bless you both. A wonderful program. Uh, we thank you very much for that powerful um, testimony. May God bless you, and may He give you much comfort and, and healing. And, and the bravery and the courage to email in and tell yeah. us as well. Very touching. So, yeah. so thank uh, you. Absolutely. Um, and, and this, Simon, in the years that I've taken calls on uh, the Pregnancy Crisis Helpline, we've had trauma, we've had people expressing so much, um, similar stories even, and yet consistently, um, e even today, I got a message from someone um, uh, with, with a, a picture, there's a picture of a child that would not be alive were it not for giving a voice of hope, a listening ear, and I, you just can't, you, you, you cannot underestimate the difference having resources and having um, and, and showing compassionate care that is pro-life can do to someone um, in a, a state of crisis. I, I've been asked here uh, by one of our, our viewers if I'm familiar with um, Good Counsel Network, 40 Days for Life, and I'm just trying to find the email. Um, I, I would say, uh, yes, in fact, Pregnancy Crisis Helpline, we, we've worked with each of these, have a very good working relationship with Good um, Counsel Network, 40 Days for Life, Rachel's Vineyard, which is um, along with PACE, Post-Abortion Support for Everyone, a very good resource for any woman who may be tuning in um, who has had an abortion and desires to find some healing and hope following that. Rachel's Vineyard and PASE, Post-Abortion Support yeah, for Everyone. But, but also, I don't know the abortion lobby uh, um, needs, well, they've certainly got a lot to answer for mm. in, in terms of the way that uh, they're pushing this legislation, the way that they have uh, cultivated and actually uh, supported members of parliament and members of the House of Lords, probably the same in the states, in the Senate and the Congress as well. And, 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 and also wanting I don't know. It, it's such a it's a such a tough it's such a difficult um, topic to discuss. But uh, you know, this is something as as Christians that we need to stand up on. We we need to speak up for the uh, the unborn. We need to defend uh, the 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 pro life choice um, because if we don't, the consequences are absolutely horrific. And if it wasn't for uh, Christian campaigning over the last few decades, and actually determining the Demo sorry, the Republicans to take this issue up. And they've made it such a huge issue now that the Republican Party, um, if they want to win the Christian vote, have to take a, a, a pro-life stance. It shows you the effectiveness of campaigning effectively. And of course, I'd love to see that happen in this country, but you know, we're too shy, we're too weak. We haven't really thought this through. But you know, now no Republican is going to stand on a, on, on an abortion platform. Yeah. Um, I'm thankful for the powerful voices of those pro-life MPs who are part of the all, all it's a cross party, all party parliamentary pro-life group. Uh, Fiona Bruce, uh, Mary Glendon, um, Sir Edward Lee, that there are a handful of individuals who are out there, Carla Lockhart, uh, most of the guys from the um, DUP in Northern Ireland, um, when, when this topic comes up, are very faithful. But you have nine members of that parliamentary group, um, uh, you know, against several hundred others who are neutral, silent, or, or don't stand up for their convictions. Well, you only have to look at the uh, current reporting on this mm. um, from our mainstream media, even the Telegraph, uh, I was reading quite a few articles on this one, always took a kind of liberal approach as if it's a, a guaranteed right that every woman should have the uh, right to abortion. Uh, and this is part of our democratic rights. This is part of living in a democratic country. We should actually have this without actually thinking through the consequences, not only for the woman themselves, but also for, also for civilization and society as well. Uh, and it just shows you what happens when you take God out the picture and allow a man to his own devices and of course this is the mess that, that we're having to pick up now and, and the pieces we have to pick up the broken lives the destroyed society uh, all those potential promises of life are just not there Heartbeat International is one of the largest pro-life groups in the United States and indeed the world, offering um, support for women in crisis. I was able to speak with their general counsel um, earlier about this important case and her involvement in the Supreme Court um, case during this time.
I'm joined by Danielle White, who is General Counsel for Heartbeat International and has had a role in, I believe, um, helping prepare various documents and present um, documents involved in this Supreme Court case. Danielle, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Reagan. Uh, it's our privilege. Now, tell us a little bit about what's transpired. We had you on the show a while back. It'd be helpful just to have a refresher on what's going on in the Supreme Court and what exactly is at stake with this particular case? Yeah, there's a lot going on. It has been a busy week or so. Um, so the Dobbs case involves a Mississippi law that outlawed abortion prior to, um, or I'm sorry, past 15 weeks of uh, gestation. So prior to viability. And that viability line has been a crucial line in the Supreme Court's framework for how it evaluates laws regarding abortion and whether they're constitutional. And so prior to this case, the line has been that states cannot prohibit abortion until viability or later. Mississippi said, we're going to go ahead and create a line at 15 weeks gestation, which is clearly before viability, which the court has placed around 24 weeks gestation. And so that law got challenged. Um, in the trial court, the, the law was struck down. And then in the appellate court, the law continued to be struck down because of this bright line viability test that exists in the Supreme Court's framework for evaluating these laws. And so the, the case came all the way up to the Supreme Court. And that's, that's where we find ourselves now. The oral argument for this case uh, occurred back in December. And after the oral argument, the justices go into a private conference that's just the justices, and they give an initial vote on what the outcome of the case will be. And so that initial vote probably occurred on the Friday after oral argument. And the justices themselves and likely their clerks have known since December where this case is heading. Now, those votes can change as the as the court starts to draft their opinions and they really grapple with the wording of the opinion and, and really the reach of the opinion. And so there's, there's just a lot that can shake out in that time. And that initial vote is not a done deal for how the case is going to, to come out. Okay. So if I understand correctly, in, in the past week, there's been a leak which has revealed that Roe versus Wade is according to that draft that was leaked, set to be overturned. Now, we understood last year at some point in the autumn that this was always possible. And indeed, um, you would know and our, our friends at Heartbeat and other organizations would know this is something that's been prayed for and, and campaigned for for many, many years. So it, it shouldn't come as a surprise to believers that something is happening in, in this arena. but. Tell us a little bit about this leak and the significance of it, both for the Supreme Court and also for this particular case. The leak itself is monumental for the Supreme Court. In modern legal American history, as far as I'm aware, there has not been a leak of a full draft opinion like this. Um, and so it's really it's really a seismic event for the Supreme Court itself. It's deeply unfortunate because I think that it calls into question the integrity of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is supposed to be uh, neutral. It's supposed to be unswayed by public opinion. And so this leak, I think, creates a perception that perhaps this public outrage that we're seeing a little bit of here since the leak, um, you know, there will kind of always be this question of, did that sway the justices one way or another? And it's deeply unfortunate that there was a leak from the Supreme Court. Um, obviously, we're, we're excited um, about the, the prospect of an opinion like this. I've, I've read the opinion. It's, it's very exciting. It's, it's so many things that the pro-life movement has worked for. There are a lot of things in there for the conservative legal movement to be excited about, but it's a it's a cautious optimism still because this is not a final decision by the Supreme Court. And until the Supreme Court hands down its final opinion, we just don't know how this case is going to turn out. In regards to the leak itself, 
Is there any idea as to how this actually occurred or the source of the leak? I am not aware of anyone knowing the source of the leak. The the document was a scanned document. Um, so somebody printed it out and then scanned it, whether they physically handed it to Politico or maybe they scanned it and sent a scanned version to it. So it's not going to have the metadata and all of the different digital clues that um, that a digital document would, would give. Um, we The universe of who could know this information is relatively small. There's the justices themselves, the clerks, each clerk has four just, uh, I'm sorry, each justice has four clerks. Um, and then perhaps their romantic partners or family members or, you know, friends. But there's always the possibility that maybe it got left at a coffee shop or that would be, that would be strange. One would think that a Supreme Court um, clerk would be very, very careful not to leave something like this sitting around. Um, and then there's some staff members in the Supreme Court, you know, the, the janitor perhaps. But yeah, it's, it's still a relatively small universe, but I'm not, I haven't heard any, I've heard lots of, um, I've heard lots of suppositions uh, or guesses, maybe educated guesses, but I have not heard anything, you know, conclusive yet. Uh, so hopefully, I suppose there'll be an investigation that will be trying to get to the bottom of it. I've already heard some bits and pieces um, in indicating that. But um, what exactly did this draft document indicate? Do you have any of the precise lettering that you could share? Yeah, the, the document is available online. So um, your, re your viewers could go and read it if they're really interested in 60 pages of what is uh, Justice Alito's first draft of this. And that's something that I think is really important to remember. This draft came from um, February and it's a first draft. And so it's possible that this is Justice Alito, this is everything that Justice Alito would want in the draft. But remember, he has to get four other people to sign on to this opinion. And so when the opinion is released, it could look very, very different from this draft. And that is true regardless of a leak. So it's unfortunate because we have this leak and there's the, the question of, oh, well, is, is the, are the changes to the draft because of the leak or are they just, would they have happened anyway? But there are some, there's some great language uh, in the draft. The, the draft says, um, you know, one of, one of the things it says is, Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak and the decision has had damaging consequences. And far from bringing about a national settlement of the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division. It's time to heed the constitution and return the issue of abortion to the people's elected representatives. Hmm. Yeah, That's fantastic wording. Um, in regards to how the US law works, it's all rooted in the Constitution. And I suppose the debate that is being had and that needs to uh, be discussed and presented, and as I understand it, it's indicated in the draft that uh, Roe versus Wade and its conclusions was not constitutional and that this then kicks power back in regard to decision-making around the abortion issue to the individual states which is what the founding fathers of the USA would have intended for uh, similar decisions and cases. Is that a fair understanding? Yes, that's a that's a critical distinction because um, overturning Roe v. Wade will not make abortion illegal in all 50 states. It, as you said, it will kick the issue back to the states where the people through their elected representatives can determine what the abortion uh, policy will be in their state. And, you know, that's a feature of the American legal system. It's not a bug. It's it's to create these policy these places for policy um, experimentation or or exploration to we will now have if this case comes down the way that um, that the leak indicates, then the states will have the ability to really experiment with exciting things that they've never been able to try before because the Supreme Court has just come in and decided the question and nine unelected people in D.C. have decided what abortion policy is going to be for all 300 million plus U.S. citizens. Now, the people through their elected state representatives will have a much greater say in what abortion law should be. That's fantastic. So, what? 
Well, we're very thankful for Danielle White there. Uh, very helpful uh, perspective on the legal grounds. Uh, and well done for getting heard. Certainly, uh, you know, working in law, working on these issues and stuff as well, so important and such a big issue that has huge implications, not only for the United States, but also for here in Britain as well. Um, Reagan, there's also something we need to alert our viewers as well, and this is according to Fox News, that the Democrats are currently backing a bill that would force a Christian doctors to perform abortions. So according to Fox News, the Democrat-backed bill would force Christian doctors to perform abortions against their very religious beliefs. A bill pushed by the Democrats in the wake of the leaked Supreme Court decision would force Christian doctors to perform abortions even if they hold religious reasons not to. Uh, this is what religious freedoms are, uh, advocates are, are warning. So there's a real danger now that the, the Democrats are using this potential of overthrowing Roe versus Wade as an opportunity then to attack Christian doctors and forcing them to carry out abortions. I mean, this is, this is just wicked. This is called the Protecting Women's Health Act. It would have immense effect on Christian medical professionals binding their conscience, essentially. But if indeed the, the, this uh, Roe versus Wade is overturned, this is not going to be an issue. Also, um, many of our viewers may be familiar with Planned Parenthood and the immense support that it has received over the years from the Democrats in particular. That will be completely gone as well. Uh, this will have, Simon, a cataclysmic effect for good in the United States. But I will say this, there will be riots. I love your battle and the battle's being drawn. How much do you think this would have an impact though on the November midterm elections? Um, as Senator Graham commented, single issue votes are, are, are voters are less and less important these days. It used to, it would have been very significant. Um, I think historically you can look at the abortion debate and say this would have been, could have been a decisive element. Um, the conservative, more conservative voters, I think are going to be more motivated to get out. So the concern is that, uh, and the Democrats are saying that, that they'll try to flood you know, voters through to the, um, the, the ballot boxes. But historically, the conservatives have the most to gain and the most to lose, arguably, and are in many cases, it seems more up for the fight. Uh, have we got any more emails in the closing minutes of the programme? It's always great to hear from, from our viewers, particularly as we were discussing this very important topic tonight. Well, uh, there's uh, much thanks from our viewers for um, the programme. We have this from Julie, Evening, Simon and Reagan. If one has ex had experience of abortion, wouldn't they encourage those against going through with it? The viewer whose email we read a few moments ago, who um, was pressured and forced into an abortion after um, rape, as definitely highlighted, the after effects can be destroying one's life for sure. It's sad that as adults, one forgets what we were like as children. Hope that makes sense. And that's from um, Julie. Indeed, it was a powerful testimony of someone who did go through with that procedure in immense crisis and has um, immense grief over it. So again, to that viewer, Anonymous, um, thank you very, very much for that. Keith says it's encouraging to see that abortion will be restricted um, in the USA. And of course, of course, I remind you, Keith, that the overturning of Roe versus Wade is not a wholesale restriction. This is um, giving power to individual states to make their own choices under on the right of constitutional law. Tragically, the UK Parliament could move in the exact opposite direction. You are quite right. There are repeated attempts by um, Labour MPs, various consortium of those two, attempts to legalise abortion up to birth. And we pray that won't happen. So, um, so it's been, uh, I hope, for our viewers, a program that's informed about this very sad situation. Um, the leak is not good. It doesn't show good integrity of the Supreme Court, but some good and positive news may come out of it, Simon, um, in uh, the benefit of many unborn lives. Absolutely. So I want to thank you for watching. Certainly the battle lines have been drawn in the United States between uh, conservatives, Christians and liberals and uh, so much at stake. So continue to pray for the unborn in the States and here. So thank you for watching tonight's Behind the Headlines.